Hi, my name is Andre, and this is Cosmos Elementary. How to learn what is inside planets and moons without digging thousands of kilometers down? There are actually many ways. We know some things about the internal structure of our planet, as well as Jupiter and such moons as Enceladus and Europa. In those cases, various methods and their combinations were applied. And now scientists have used another cool way to learn about a planet's insides, and this time the planet is Saturn. As strange as it may sound, to learn what is inside Saturn, scientists used its rings. But how? Let's talk about the gravitational field of planets. It has already been used to get information about the inner structure of planets, for instance, Jupiter and Earth. Planets' gravitational fields are not uniform. Let's look at our own planet. Obviously, its surface is not a perfect sphere. It's a bit flattened at the poles because of axial rotation. It has mountains and other geological features. The distribution of mass is not uniform. As a result, gravity is a little stronger or weaker in different locations. It is measured by missions like GRACEFO. It consists of two spacecraft separated by a distance of 220 kilometers. They constantly exchange microwave signals, and because, at the same time, they are above different parts of Earth, they experience varying gravity. That's why the distance between two spacecraft is constantly changing, and that is detected by a microwave system. And that's how such maps are built and we can very well see that the gravitational field is not uniform. There was also a similar moon mission called GRAIL. We haven't sent such pairs of spacecraft to Jupiter, but still a somewhat similar principle was used there. When Juno spacecraft flies above different parts of Jupiter with varying gravitational field, it affects the velocity of the spacecraft. And we can detect that measuring Doppler shift of signals coming from the spacecraft to Earth. And that helps us to learn more about what's inside the planet. But also Jupiter and Saturn are different from Earth, because they don't have a solid surface. They are not giant balls of rock. Gas giants are more dynamic and the distribution of mass is changing more quickly. And that of course affects the gravitational field. And that is what scientists used in the case of Saturn. They studied the planet's rings using data from Cassini spacecraft. And they found oscillations in the inner rings of Saturn, for instance in the Syrian. The rings had spiral patterns that were different from what could be caused by Saturn's moons. So something else had to be arisen. And that something was the planet itself, fluctuations of its gravitational field. The planet itself is wobbling a little. What we would call a surface in the case of a gas giant moves up and down every hour or two. The core is wobbling and that affects the gravitational field and the particles in the inner rings of Saturn. Cassini spacecraft detected that wobble and that allows us to peer inside the planet. The rings play the role of a um, seismograph of sorts. They reflect what is going on in the planet itself. To study what's inside our planet, we also use seismographs, just the ones that are made by humans. Then scientists analyzed those oscillations, their properties and frequencies, compared them to different models and made an interesting conclusion about the planet's core. The authors of this study that came out in Nature Astronomy concluded that the core of Saturn is not rocky and solid, as it was believed in some previous studies. But rather it is fuzzy, and the closer you get to the center of Saturn, the higher the concentration of ice and rock in hydrogen and helium, which the planet is mostly made of. So its core is sort of diluted. Actually, there were some studies claiming that Jupiter might as well have such a diluted core. It also turned out that Saturn's core is much larger than it was previously thought. Up to 60% of the planet's radius can be its core, and the mass of ice and rock is about 17 masses of Earth, and the entire mass of the core is about 55 Earth masses. What I find interesting in this story is the method by which scientists learned all that. And also, if they are right, it gives us information about formation of gas giants. According to one of the theories, gas giants form as solid cores and later they accrete gas from protoplanetary disks and then become giants. But if they do have such diluted fuzzy cores, that goes against that formation theory. And another theory of the disk instability model, where gas giants form more like stars, might be superior. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this shorter video, check out my deeper dives into various topics on astrophysics and cosmology. And links to all of the sources are, as usual, down below in the description. Bye.